All right, guys. So you tired of uh, Arctic Spear? You tired of Havoc Orb? Do you want to be able to beat 187 with a uh, different build and not have to just worry about holding one button, button down and running through and getting bored as hell? Um, this or, and you want to interact. You want to you want to actually you know dodge and hack and 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 do different skills and and have fun with the game. I got a build for you here. It's a it's another occult build. I like building kind of off the occult uh, damage stats. It's easier for me, especially since I kind of started leaning towards occult, and so a lot of my gear is leaned or is towards occult. So. Um, I have been farming some other gear. Maybe we'll try some different, um, like material or, uh, uh, elemental damage. But, uh, right now, so let's, let's look at our, our stats here. Oh, also, if you notice down here, we're playing a low life ES build. So, um, I switched it over to mainly four shield and, uh, no life pretty much, uh, is what we got here. And so let's take a look at our stats real quick. Uh, we have, uh, Zero points in a ferocity. Any points we get in ferocity is from gear. Uh, we're not prioritizing ferocity at all because we're not. We don't care about crits on this build. Uh, this is a pure um, occult dot build, basically. So we're just worrying about putting curse and stasis and weakness on enemies. Uh, we have 280 points spent in toughness, 280 in agility, and 280 in wisdom. And the reason why? So we spent 280 in wisdom to get the the chance up so the more points we spend in wisdom the higher chance we have to apply weakness stasis and curse uh, we have agility we just get more casting speed and able to dodge and stuff a little better uh, toughness just for health four shield obviously um, but the reason so the the main one we want to land on on enemies is curse because the curse what it does is it increases the damage received on affected target so the more curse stacks we have with the enemy the more damage we do to them uh, weakness of course um, decreases the damage they do to us so putting weakness we take less damage so that's a little bit of survivability stasis kind of slows them down uh, so they move slower attack slower uh, so, so all three of these are pretty decent to put on enemies uh, so you start out uh, at the beginning of the game you start out with only being able to apply 10 and through the passive tree nodes you can apply uh, up to 30, and that's the max stack limit you can do. Uh, so let's take a look at the skills that we're bringing on here. Uh, we're going with Plague Burst. So for for Mage, uh, Plague Burst and Anomaly, Anomaly are kind of like, they go hand to hand, they work really well together. So what we're doing is we're switching the damage over to Ether. We get 25% extra damage here. Uh, I've played around with different points and just leaving it on the base, but I, I feel like um, switching it over to Ether it does a little better here. And we're just increasing the area effect with this node. Uh, we're able to target a location. Without it, it's it's um, cast on us. This one, we um, when enemies are killed, it leaves a toxic damage uh, cloud, and it, and it leaves it in whatever damage you're doing. So since I switched it to Ether... It is doing uh, ether damage. If you leave it on base, I think it's toxic, uh, which is which is poison, uh, which we don't want anyways. And this increases the damage dealt by player explosion for every element stack that the enemy has. So somewhere, since we're stacking elements, we should have 90 stacks uh, total. Because 30 curse, 30 uh, stasis, 30 weakness. This should increase the damage. So, and this is just a flat uh, increase in damage here. Anomaly. Uh, we're, we're not going sacred here. I feel like it's better to spend the points in here and plus uh, We don't really need to um, as well So our main point here is uh, One of the, or a couple main points in here. This one is it pulls enemies multiple times. So it sucks them in multiple times uh, This one another one that increases element damage dealt to enemies in their area effect This one lasts makes it last two seconds longer Increases our area effect. This gives 40% element damage applied by anomaly and anomaly uh, damages enemies when they're pulled into the vortex um, And also I wanted to note on these skills here. So let's go back to plague burst. So if you look at the damage here uh, The highest damage is what uh, Elements you're going to be applying so you want to make sure since we want to apply curse mainly 
we want to make sure we have shadow damage uh, as a higher number here and you do that by you can put gems in your weapon stuff um, to increase how much shadow damage you're doing uh, and then sacred and ether are second and third Th those ones not as not as important as shadow damage so if you notice you're not doing curse with uh, any of your skills um, you want to look uh, at your, your your global damage here and look under the damage and see make sure shadow damage is up there so anyway so let's look at uh, uh, blade storm here we're using blade storm for for two for a few purposes actually for number one to dump rage into willpower um, number two it has a nice node here uh, I don't remember which one it is uh, is it this one okay incoming enemy projectiles are redirected when blowing storm is active so once we we put this skill this skill down and then we're hitting them with this and then we can jump out and we start dumping rage into willpower uh, and waiting for like a uh, light ringer to come off the cooldown we could be using blade storm and in any enemies that are shooting at us or throwing any type of projectiles we're just we're just shooting them away and we're not taking any damage so that's that's why we pick up this node it's really help helpful for survivability uh, this increases our attack speed and our cast speed so that's nice to have uh, this allows us to hold it down. You need this node so you can hold down Blade Storm and uh, make it more efficiently dump and rage into willpower. Uh, this is just another element stack on enemies' house. You increase your damage, and this just increases the chance uh, to stack elements. And also another reason uh, why we're doing that is um, is using Blade Storm is so when we're dumping willpower into rage, we can also be putting curse stacks onto our enemies. Um, and if we remove the poison damage from here, um, which I have, I think, on my uh, necklace here, uh, it removes the poison damage. So I just don't have the best, I mean, I have a decently rolled necklace here, but, or amulet. It's just not the, uh, it has the toxic damage of poison. So poison doesn't do anything for us here, but it's not that big of a deal. We, and we go over to Lightbringer. I actually changed up Lightbringer a little bit here. Uh, because we don't really care about the healing it does. We're worried more about four shield since we're a, a four shield low life or an ES low life build. So let's just go over these nodes here. Regenerate four shield per enemy hit by Lightbringer. This is, this is a really good one. So if you have a big mob grouped together with Anomaly and then you hit them with Lightbringer, um, or even if they're around you, you hit them with Lightbringer, your, your four shield's pretty much... Uh, fills right back up uh, Increases the speed that the lightbringer stages have and these are the stages. So when you hold down And then you can select the area you want to land That's what this that's what that means. That's what the stages are. So it just makes it faster through that uh, This gives us an all resist buff uh, This is this leaves an area effect that does some damage. It's not a whole lot of damage But it's it's a decent amount. So that's why it's also good to charge up these stages here because you're kind of wasting it if you're not uh, if you're able to on bosses it's it, depending on the situation you may not want to charge just want to break shields uh, apply weakness with that one we get an all resistant buff right and then this is the, another key node here which gives us the stun and that allows us to break shields on bosses and stun enemies and uh, so the, the more uh, shields are broken the more enemies are stunned the less damage we're going to take Ether jump. So ether jump. We go in maximum range. We're going uh, deals damage from the uh, in between our start and end points and increases our element score. This one uh, leaves elements to the enemies near the beginning and then a teleport. So it'll it'll stick stasis and curse and stuff on them while we're teleporting around. Uh, this allows us to jump around a whole bunch, but it also increases rage cost. You don't have to go this one. Um, you can also go here here. This reduces willpower and this cooldown. So the cooldown is pretty good. It's only what 0.7 seconds, so you can hit it pretty well. Um, so it's kind of up to you. It's a preference thing. I've been swapping back and forth, and you, I don't know. It's that big of a deal. This removes crowd control effect is on you. Increase movement speed when we use ether. And here's infinity blades. Just we're using this um, to do most of our damage. Uh, so first, first things first is we converting it to shadow damage. Just curse. There's a reason why curse, and we get more damage. Uh, 
If you look at our damage, we go up close to 4,000 or so going over to Shadow. Uh, so let's look at, we're gonna do, we're gonna generate willpower when, when uh, enemies are killed. We're gonna generate willpower on crits. We're not a crit build, so we don't crit often, but we do crit, and when we do crit, we generate willpower. Um, Increased damage dealt with independent blades with your force shield remaining. This is actually a pretty big bump. Uh, that's um, close to like 2,500 damage just on this note alone. Uh, this increases our element damage uh, per stack applied. So we've been applying a lot of curse with this. So we'll be doing a lot more damage. That helps out a lot. Uh, this increases damage dealt by almost every stack they have. Uh, so these two just kind of help increase damage, increase damage here. And this one's just a flat weapon damage. All right, let's go over gear. I'm also going to have a link in the description that kind of uh, goes over the stats you want on your gear and, and the passive tree and, and gems and all that stuff. So if you want to read more into detail, it'll have the passive tree in there and all that stuff. So we're going sword here. We're going sword so we can use uh, blade storm. You can't go dagger because dagger won't roll cult. It only rolls material and elemental. Uh, and same with, I think, axe. So just chose sword here. Uh, and on sword, what, what I really like is the stun duration. We get a little bit of leech. Uh, we get the shadow damage and we get a cult damage on attacks with this weapon. So it's uh, it's a percentage. So that's it's pretty good. And then we go over a catalyst. Uh, or also, sorry, the gems in here. We just have 15 shadows. Dispels on two of them uh, for offensive two and then offensive one to attacks. And the reason why we do for the attacks is for Blade Storm here, just so we can apply curse. And then our catalyst, we get ether damage. We got max uh, spell roll, which is 40% spell damage. We get leech, um, critical chance we don't care about too much. We get a cold alignment score, uh, which is pretty good. And the freeze is a write off as well. And then we're going uh, support two for 20% shadow damage. And then the third one, I just kind of threw that one in there. Uh, you can kind of rearrange that one however you want. It's two, we just get 2% uh, casting speed. Uh, our boots, we've got heavy right now for resist. Uh, we've got, uh, that's basically what we pulled this one up for is resist. Uh, we don't, we got the wisdom stat on there, which is nice. The element stat um, and the resistances, that's the main reason there. Here we're, we're adding four shield in the gems. We get the transfer to willpower rage. We get um, cooldown reduction and a ton of force shield. Here we get occult damage percentage, willpower regeneration, force shield, and more uh, uh, elements chance with a 20% chance shadow damage ring or gem. Here we're going bruiser for health and resistances. We really don't care too much about the health, but more of the resistances. So you can swap that out for probably a, um, a heavy if you want. Um, but I don't have a good heavy to replace this with because I get occult damage to transfer willpower, agility, and resist. So, And then I'm using force shield on both of these. We get occult damage, uh, willpower, cost reduction, wisdom, element. Uh, so we're just going to kind of hover over the rest of these. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you, so the, the max stacks you want, you want uh, Rage and Willpower, Cost Reduction, Resource Generation, Agility, Wisdom, Toughness, uh, Passive Dodge Chance Score, uh, because we're taking some nodes to help with Dodge. Dodge mitigates any damage, so if you do get a Dodge, uh, it's a free like uh, avoidance of, of any, all the damage you hit. And another one here um, is this. This one's pretty nice, the two element stacks applied. That's the max max actually number you can get on this roll uh, so it just helps us apply um, elements faster uh, the more elements we find the faster we do the better um, and I don't know if I mentioned skill to, uh, skill cooldown reduction you want uh, and, and those are the main stats you can read more into detail exactly what stats I don't want to make this video an hour long going over every stat uh, and I did forget a little bit in the character here so if we look at um, uh, the main thing we want to look at here, so our passive dodge chance isn't super, super high. We can get some more dodge chance rolled, but that's close to 40%. So 40% chance to um, to dodge isn't, isn't too bad. That's just It's just free uh, damage reduction, so might as well take it. Uh, and, and in some of our 
path through our passive trees. We have uh, uh, passive nodes or, or uh, dodge chance passive nodes to pick up, so we might as well take advantage of it. Uh, I don't think there's really anything else to talk about in here, but kind of scroll through the scroll through this slowly. Oh yeah, resistances. They're not super high, but uh, I was playing around with no resistances and force shields, and that's not a good idea. You want uh, you want some resistances because that mitigates damage. So the way it calculates how much damage you take, it calculates in uh, block chance and and resistances and stuff before you take the damage. So it's a good. Uh, uh, you don't want to ignore resistances. So let's look at passive tree, and um, we'll just kind of talk about our main nodes here, right? So. Uh, Right here, this is when your force shield is full, damage taken care reduced or damage taken are reduced by thirty percent, right? So when our force shield is full, we we take less damage, so we try to keep our force shield as full when possible. Um, that is key. Uh, we're taking this one for more uh, willpower and rage. We're taking it over this one because this is a hundred and this is one hundred fifty, uh, so we get fifty more. So it doesn't make any sense since we're passing right here anyways and then we come up into immortal offering wait immortal offerings on this side sorry so this one just when you kill an enemy you increase the damage corresponding to the element stack on that enemy by one percent up to ten stacks so at the bottom left screen when you see us going through the map you'll see them pop up and that's the uh, indication that you're getting immortal offering and it just increases your damage so uh, why, uh, it's a good note to take and, and, and coming in here you get um, spell damage so that's good to have Th these two nodes are are must have these two this is 510 so that brings us up to 20 stacks we can apply this one uh, allows us to have a total of three stacks on an enemy without this we can only do two uh, we, we, and we want all three we want stasis weakness and Curse. Um, this one here allows us to apply two at one time uh, element, so that's a really good one to have. And this one just increases our element damage. Uh, we do lose a little bit of damage, um, so we might we might take it off. Might not. It, it, I don't know. It, I think since we're doing element curse and stuff, uh, that that helps out quite a bit. This one's a good one to take because it increases our element uh, chance. It's to multiply. If we, if we play one stack, we will apply two. Uh, instead, and it's a 50% chance. This bumps it up to 75% chance. Uh, and we come up into Time Reaver, right? So let's just ether damage, dodge chance here, uh, element and attack speed and stuff. This one, this one's pretty cool. So what this one does is when you hit an enemy effect by stasis and attack, you get a supernatural paradox point, right? Uh, these. Uh, you get a total of five five percent spell casting per uh, supernatural, so we can get uh, up to twenty five percent spell casting, and then also we can get up to five percent attack speed uh, or twenty five percent attack speed bonus, which helps uh, blade storm, and then the spell casting helps us with uh, affinity blades. So it's a nice nice node to have uh, in game uh, when we get the last few points. This is gonna we're gonna take this node. Uh, this one here, this reduces our damage by 40%, or we take 40% of the damage on the first hit, and then we take 60% afterwards. And the 60% you're taking also recalculates your resistances, and your block chance, and all that stuff. So it's actually even more reduced. Uh, so you're actually really not taking a full 60%. So it's a real good note to take. You do decrease your, your health. And your force shield and if you want more health and force shield you can take this node here uh, this one just uh when you when you hit an enemy affected by stasis they take 10 percent of the hit damage again after 1.5 seconds so when you hit it if they're they're going to be affected by stasis so they're going to be taking 10 percent every one and a half second that's just extra damage thrown on and this is another node we'll, we'll take up just five percent more um so let's uh let's just come over this way so we come this way, cooldown reduction, right? Uh, just some more health, more dodge chance. Uh, we come over here. We're taking this node because 
this puts the dots that we get the damage over time like the bleeds and the burns and the shocks and stuff it hits our force shield first and this is what keeps us from dying because we have no health basically we have like 2,000 health uh, if we didn't take the snow we would die uh, it wouldn't make it very far we're taking this one for the, the life leech and this also causes life leech to leech on our shield instead uh, we're taking this for willpower and willpower and we're coming up this way and we're hitting this one this is a stasis uh, just no sacred sacred nodes so this one's good um, though when our force shield is by 50% you gain 25% sacred damage so we get more damage keeping our force shield up this gives us a, an additional 10% damage this one dealing sacred damage to underlings that kill them underlings and specialists when they get below 10% health that kills them instantly this applies that to champions so that's a real good we're always applying stasis so they're going to die when they hit 10% health that's a big bump now we're coming over here and we're coming this route for the occult damage occult damage just increasing our damage all around this is a really good note if you, if you think about it so we get 2% occult damage to enemies per per stack affecting them so if you think about it we're putting 30 curse stacks so times 2 so that should be a total of 60% damage increase with an additional 1%. So it's another 30%. So this should be like a 90% damage increase here. Super good node to take. Uh, and that's why we focus another reason why we focus curse. Uh, this one doubles our max force shield, but our health can't see a seed 5% or maximum. This is what makes us a low life build, um, a high yes, low life build. Uh, and when you take this node, this is when you want to have this node and you want to have this node because it just reduces damage and this converts our dots to our force shield. Uh, so that's pretty much the build. I'll have the final tree uh, in the comments or the description. So if you have any questions about it, uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, if you want to see anything else or any other type of builds or any other type of videos, let me know. leave them down in the comments. Uh, we're going to do a run on 187 to kind of showcase what this build can do. So stay tuned for that, guys. All right, guys, here we go. We're at, we're actually on my favorite map to run with this build just because this map has a sheer the sheer volume of uh, enemies that can spawn on this map is really good. And it helps with Anomaly and Spike Burst combo. The more enemies we have more damage you can really do. Should have charged up right there. Should have Lightbringer up, charge it up. Drop plague plague burst anomaly. Infinity blades here. Get out of that. Don't want to get hit by that. That claw is what really hurts. Also, mi forgot to mention in the build, uh, Blade Storm is actually uh, faster than walking. So after we have a nice little fight, kill all the enemies, that right now. we can use Blade Storm to dump willpower and uh, it increases our mobility because we're going to move faster than we typically walk. And also, so these enemies, these blue and uh, gold highlighted enemies, uh, you don't have to fight them. It slows you down. So, it's up to you. You, you can skip them. You don't need to fight them to, to beat the level. But I just kind of want to showcase uh, fighting them, I guess. We should be applying some elements a little bit on these guys. And see, our force shield just jumps right back up. Since we were charging it, and then we land on all those enemies, we get force shield for that. So. 
And the little lightning bolts, that's the uh, sacred tree where it kills enemies under 10% health. Which way? I'm, th I'm feeling this way. And we ignore those. Those take forever to kill. This way, and then we split off. Mm, we'll go right. We'll go towards like the emblems here. The, the cursed chest and the chest of greed. Uh, I'm not gonna. Mm, I don't know if I really want to fight the Uber. Eh, maybe. Why not? Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll get a um, nice drop. Lambrick Kiss is what this box, Uber box's name. It just takes a, a longer to kill things. That's the that's the thing about the, a build that's not using projectiles. It, it's, it's possible to beat the other levels. And see, that wasn't even worth my time to fight that guy. Uh, he didn't drop anything special. So it's definitely south of the chest. And south of that cursed chest. We'll keep going that way. Because all I did was waste my time. I mean, maybe a decent amount of XP. I feel like sometimes it's just a waste of time. I need more power. To fight these uh, special enemies. But we should be able to kill most of these. And then get the, uh, the boss unlocked so we can fight the boss. Almost there. There we go. Where's the boss gonna spawn? South. Pick up all the loot real quick. Should be getting pretty full. And now we can just pretty much ignore everything and just go past them and we can just spin for days here Be almost there. And we want to take these guys into the boss room if possible.
because they're going to increase our damage. They're going to get us some mortal offering attacks. Be able to fill our uh, core shield back up with these guys. And then we just well on the boss for a while. Dodge. Um, hits. Keep smacking them. And you see that I see at the top corner, but our top kind of rightish of this health bar. You'll see 30 stacks of each element. Uh, two now. And you see that they're climbing up pretty quick. And we have all max stacks again. And then we're going to wait for his force shield to recharge, and then we'll uh, stun him again right there. The Lightbringer. He's almost dead. Ooh, I took some pretty heavy hits there. And he's dead. And that's how you do that right there. It's not too bad. Just takes a little more time than uh, using the, uh, the, the Arctic Spear, Havoc Orb, and your projectiles, but it works pretty well. Uh, so if you have any questions about this build, leave them down in the comments section. Uh, peace out. Appreciate every one of you.